section, we're going to look at thermochemistry. Um, thermochemistry is the study of heat change. This is a really nice topic and it's really interesting. Hopefully you enjoy it. So for our learning intentions, what we want to get out of this is we obviously want to define what a reactant is, what a product is. Exo and endothermic reactions, some of the, you guys may remember this from TY chemistry. Um, we're going to look at examples of both endothermic and exothermic reactions. So, as you know, a chemical reaction is split into two parts, the beginning and the end. So we have the chemical reaction here for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide and water, chlorophyll sunlight, giving us glucose and oxygen. If you have five minutes, guys, why don't you sit down and actually write out the full balanced equation. Just a reminder, CO2, H2O, glucose C6H12O6, and oxygen being O2. Now, actually, just a little reminder, if we go backwards, so if we read from right to left, um, removing the sunlight and the chlorophyll, we actually have the equation for respiration. Now, the carbon dioxide and the water, these are called our reactants. The two things that are going to come together and react. As a result, our glucose and our oxygen are the products, what we get out of the reaction. So the definition for a reactant is a chemical that interacts together during a chemical reaction, whilst the product is the substance formed at the end of a chemical reaction. Now, I find that quite easy to understand, very straightforward. Reactants react, products are formed. So we're going to have a look at the heat of or the heat in a reaction. Exit, to leave or to give out. So X is actually the Latin word, EX is um, a Latin word for out of, to give out. Um, so an exothermic reaction is one that produces or gives out heat. So you can feel the contents of the reaction vessel actually getting hotter. You can measure the heat change in this case. Now, obviously, this would be a great... Um, Example, our bodies are a great example of this. For example, respiration is an exothermic reaction and every single combustion reaction is exothermic. Enter, okay? End on, so E-N-D-O-N, -E -E is actually the Greek word for inside. So an endothermic reaction is one that takes in heat. So that would actually feel cold to the touch. Um, if you've ever had like a sherbet dib dab or, you know, the flying saucer sweets, um, when the sherbet actually mixes with the saliva in your mouth, it tends to feel cold when you eat it. And that's a prime example of an endothermic reaction. So as I said, respiration, you can see here, um, when we sweat, Okay, when we get hot, we sweat. That's to help cool us down. It's because our bodies are producing heat as a result of the exothermic reaction of respiration. And then again, you know, burning anything produces heat. Also, don't forget the other two products of combustion, which are carbon dioxide and water. Um, endothermic reaction, so sorbet actually. Sorbet is different to ice cream. That's really interesting. If you look at sorbet and how it feels cold in your mouth, go actually have a look at it. It's very similar to the sherbet, like the dib dabs that I was talking to you about. Um, photosynthesis, obviously. Our plants take the energy, the sun's energy, the UV radiation. They take in the energy and convert it in, um, in the plant. So let's have a look at the difference between exo and endo. So an exothermic provides heat to the surroundings and an endothermic reaction removes heat from the surroundings. If you have a couple of minutes, um, go online, look up the Brainiac um, video on thermite. Um, it's fabulous. It's a really big, beautiful um, visual representation of an exothermic reaction. Um, you can actually do this in the lab on a very, very small scale because it can be extremely dangerous. 
So that's everything. We've been able to say what a reactant is, a product is, an endothermic and an exothermic, and we're able to give a definition of both.